Hi, Rich Spizzano here from Digitally Fearless, and today I'm going to do a beginner's tutorial. It's nothing crazy or that fancy, but I just wanted to show you some simple photo manipulations and techniques you can use. So let's get started. So I have all the photos in the description, the links to the photos in the description, and basically I just pulled out these four silhouettes. I got them on Google and I also got the brain on Google and I already messed them out and just rasterized it because we've gone through that in so many lessons before. So they all just, their backgrounds are uh, taken away and all their backgrounds were white so it was very easy. And now I also wanted a stock photo. Let me turn all of these off right now. And I was looking for some stock photo that was someone with a dreamy feeling like they're looking up but they're actually daydreaming and I found this one here which is also in the description and I'm just going to pull this and bring it right in and let's go I'm doing controller command minus to pull out and I would like to bring her down but I really want her down almost off the page I'd say like that I think that works out just about right and I want her bigger, maybe like that. So let's just go to the crop tool and expand the canvas. I'd say maybe that much. And I think I'll cut it back a little here. And I think that's good for now. Let's give that a shot. And there we go. So now I'm going to do back, go back again. In one of my lessons, I showed you how you can take a photo and convert it to curves. So I'm going to do that. And the reason I'm going to do that is I want to fill this in, but I want to make sure it's the exact same color. And I could use the flood selection tool and pick the color, but this one works better with photos if there's a background like that. So I just converted it to curves and then I, I hit the uh, node tool and I just bring this side up and I'll bring this side up and that works out pretty good and I'd say okay and then we we'll go back and that's about right we might adjust we might adjust that later and that can also be blurred out a little bit if we need to but I kind of like the feeling of that it'll help with the um, imagination part of this tutorial I think I've gotten her just about where I want to so what I will now do is right click let me show you what I, why I was doing that you see how big this is so if I right click and I say rasterize and trim, she will no longer be off the page and gigantic. So rasterize and trim, and now she's the exact size of the canvas. So that's how that works. Let me go back a little here. And so now let's pull in the brain. And we just got this brain, and we'll bring the brain up to the front. And let's rotate the brain. Well, yeah okay let's rotate the brain like that and give it like kind of try to shape it we'll also do some whopping I'm just trying to get the size of the brain where I think it, it would look good and that's good like that so now I'm going to take that and mesh warp it I'm going to hit the mesh warp here that's down here and if you don't see it uh, it might be under the pers perspective tool so hold down and hit mesh warp and what I'll do now is I'll start warping this more in the shape of her head. Give it a little curve there. We could pull in a little bit here. Like that, maybe. And pull this part out a little. So I'm just basically, you could do it any way you want, but I'm just kind of shaping it to make it look like it's coming working inside her head that's all and I think I'll pull that one and maybe I'll curve this middle line up a little like that yep I think that's fine so I'll hit apply and now I'm going to go to adjustments HSL and I will desaturate the brain now let's take all the people let's bring these let's bring them all up in fact I'm going to take them all and put them in front. So I'm going to take all of these and put them on top so we can see them all. So let's decide which where we want uh, each one to be. 
so she's dreaming saying about being a businesswoman maybe and i know you can't see them very well right now but i will color them and 3d them and i think i'll put the runner here and then i think she wants to be part of an artist and then she might want to be a ballet dancer so we need to position these to where we think we want them so i'm going to turn this and do arrange flip horizontally and do like that and maybe because she's in the back she'll be a tiny bit smaller we'll put her back here let's have the runner here and i think the runner we can turn a little bit too like that and then here she looks like she's an artist and then a ballet dancer the ballet dancer looks a little big to me so i'm just going to put her there and i think that's okay I kind of like that. I think the runner may be a little bit more on an angle. And maybe even this one, just a touch like that. Okay, so now we're going to take each one individually and we're going to color them out. So we go to the first one and we go to effects and we go to color overlay. And I'd say the first one maybe is a blue. Let's do a Pick some kind of a nice blue, and I think that looks good. And then we'll 3D her. Let's increase that 3D a little bit. I think I'll move the lighting direction kind of toward the, the top there, a little bit in the middle. That I like that like that. And I say, and you know what? I'm going to scale with object. I think that's important, and I'll say close. And then we pick the next one. And let's try another. Let's go to effects again. Let's color overlay. And I think this one we can do a green color, some sort of a nice green. I would say maybe in that kind of a family. And then we'll go to 3D again, make it large. And I would kind of do that. And I'm okay with that too. And so now we have that, and I think that's pretty cool. So there we do. And I think maybe a little bit more of a turn here and almost off to the side. And I kind of like this one maybe here. And I'll bring her up a little. Okay, that looks pretty good. Still not happy with this, but <laughs> it's good enough, I guess. There we go. So now the next thing you do is watch this trick. Let's take the first one and give control or command J to duplicate that layer and then take the second part, the underneath layer and go to the smudge tool. If you just go down here to smudge brush tool and with a soft brush about the size width or the width of the shoulders maybe, you just push up and I'm gonna go swish and a little bit more, swish and maybe even a little bit more than that. And then I'll just go on top like that. You have to go back to the Move tool. And you duplicate a Control Command J. Select the bottom one. And with the same smudge tool, we do it again. And decide where you want it to go. Maybe you want some more up here. We go to the red. We hit the pointer tool. We go to the red. Duplicate Control Command J and select the one below and smudge again let's go up this way maybe and then the last one would be the ballerina controller command j and the bottom one there and maybe this time i'll smudge even out like that and maybe that and maybe that and maybe that now let's see if we take the top one i'm curious if I'm not sure if I'll do this, but we go back to effects. Let's just give it a slight out of shadow. I'm just double checking the offset and where it would be. Let's lower the intensity. I'm trying to show the diff that she's not connected to that. I mean, a little bit behind it. And I think that's okay. Let me try a little bit angle here. So I think that works. So let's see, we did about halfway and then we did 113. So let's do that with all of them. I should have, and I'll, I could speed this process up for you. So you don't have to go through it all. Okay, so I basically placed, 
an outer shadow and I didn't I wasn't trying to get a shadow below I was just trying to separate them from the colors behind them so that the shapes of the heads would show okay there I think next what we'll do is under each one each, under the bottom ones add a pixel layer and then we'll in black we will take a soft brush very soft brush zero hardness and in black we will kind of just I'm not trying to get a real shadow what I'm trying to do here is just give it a dimension. If I was going to, this is kind of a fantasy, so I don't really need a real shadow, but I just wanted to give them each a fantasy. And once I did that, just like a little bit of darkness there, um, I can go to effects, Gaussian blur, and see how I'm blurring it out? And I can also change the opacity, but I just want a little tiny bit of shadow there. And once I do that, I will take these three and then control the command G and group them because I want, in case I move it just like this, I need to be able to move it with the shadow. The green one, I'll do the same thing. Under the lower green, we're going to select that layer and then add a new layer. So that's right under the green. We're going to paint with black. Just touch. I'm basically tapping almost. And I really, it's not a legitimate shadow. I'm just trying to get a little bit of a feeling of something in there that somewhat something is there and I just want a little bit three-dimensional kind of thing you see I even put it behind there and then it, once again Gaussian blur with the effects in that layer and I'm just gonna blur it out like kind of like that all right and then I'm going to do the next two. I'm going to go fast for you on the next two. Okay, so I'm back. So I didn't remember as I was doing them, I should have selected the three and do Control Command G for group. Select again, all three, group. And these three should be grouped. So we're getting there. It's almost there. On top of it all, I am going to say Layer, New, Fill Layer. And I am going to click the layer and I will go to gradient. And I think on the gradient, we'll give it a shot. We will kind of select in this purplish pinkish family. Real light though. I think something like that. And then we're going to go to the other side and maybe a little bit more purple. Whoops. Purplish. And I think that looks good up here. So we can grab the handle now and pull it down and bring this one up. Nope, I'm sorry. Pull it down. And then take this one and move it this way. And we'll have to figure out the colors. So to do that, first we're going to do overlay or soft light. So we have to decide. Overlay is pretty strong. I'm going to go to soft light, which I like. And now we, we can still continue with this and decide how much purple we want in it. And maybe what I'll do is I'll go on an angle, since she is on an angle, and I'll lighten her up a little. I'll put the lighter part coming down like that. And I think that looks pretty good, so let's see. Let's go back to select tool and zero. And I kind of like that. I could fade it a little if you want, like just give it a little fade like that, darken it a little. And then all we have to do now is to pick a font and put the word dream. So let's do the word dream on top of everything. How about dreamer? I think maybe dreamer would be nice. And we have to pick a position. And I like this purple. It just happened to be there. And I think we might be able to work with that purple. And we have to go up high, I would say, and maybe even on a little bit of an angle, kind of. So what I can also do is I can arch it a little bit so what I'll do is I'll go to the Mesh Warp tool and maybe kind of bring it up like that and a little bit this way and maybe this side a little bit down, even more, something like that. And maybe this side a little bit down and then the middle way up to clear these people. And I think I like that, so I will hit Apply. And then I can go to, once again, we'll go to the 3D 
and give it a nice radius. And after that, let's see, we can give it an outer shadow to separate it from the others. Let's put it offset. Okay, so that's good. And I think the last thing, I might want to crop it a little bit more. So how about there? And maybe even a little bit up. Let's get rid of this. Let's see what that looks like. The last thing I think I want to do is I'm going to take the brain, and I'd like to fade it a little. So I'm going to rasterize the brain, and I'll add a mask. And if you take a soft brush and you paint in black on the mask, it disappears. If you paint in white, it reappears. So with a soft brush, I'm kind of going to follow the edges just to soften it up by her face. And some of the hair, too. If I go a little wider, it fades even more on the edges, so it looks good by the hair. I'm, I'm kind of smoothing it out a little bit and making it look like it's part of her brain coming out of her face. A little bit more here. And on this side a little bit. So that's the final graphic. It was very simple. I'm not getting too complicated with it. I wanted it to be a beginner's tutorial. So if you find this tutorial useful, please click like and subscribe and have a great day. Bye.